Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like, you know, to check the date of the big game first before you accidentally buy tickets on your 20th wedding anniversary and have to spend the next 20 years of your marriage making up for it. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. You go into your shower feeling... But as soon as you reach for the Irish Spring, your day immediately gets better. That crisp, fresh, unmistakable Irish Spring scent zings your brain and awakens your senses. So when you finally emerge from the shower, 37 minutes later, because you pay the water bill so you can stay in there as long as you want, you're ready to take on the day. And smell great doing it. Irish Spring Body Wash and Bar Soap. Fresh. Green. Irish. Shop now at Walmart. It's time for a Big Blue Kickoff Live. Nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it because you're dead. On Giants.com. You know what I saw? New York Giant Prime. And the Giants mobile app. 17-14 at the final. One touchdown, we are world champions. Believe it, and it will happen. Part of the Giants Podcast Network. Let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs. Have some fun. And we welcome you to Friday's edition of Big Blue Kickoff Live, presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football Giants. We're going to be here for the next hour talking Giants football with you as they prepare for a Week 3 matchup on the road against the Cleveland Browns, a team that is 1-1. Giants are 0-2, as you no doubt are aware. I'm Paul Dottino. He is Jonathan Casillas, two-time Super Bowl champ. And again, we're going to be at 201-939-4513, 201-939-4513 to take your phone calls. And remember, if you're not watching this show live, you can always catch it on the Giants archive. Uh, go to your favorite podcast platforms or go to Giants.com slash podcasts. And, you know, Jonathan, we did get a, a little bit of an injury update today. Uh, Coach Brian Dable saying that Nick McLeod still would not practice. He's got a sore knee. So I would assume that in a couple of hours when the official Friday injury report comes out, it's very likely that he is not going to be available for the game, which means that Cordell Flott and the ramping up of Dory Jackson, who I would think in week three should be ramped up enough to get the majority of the reps at corner. I I would think. Yeah, you think in... Corner two? Yeah. CB2? Yeah, next to the opposite, opposite banks. Yeah. Yeah, I think he should be fine, you know, and if not, then, you know, he's going to have a, a day in, you know, in store for a long day, you know, but, uh, you know, he's a professional. You know, this is his, what, seventh year in the NFL? Yeah, I think so. Don't worry. So he's a veteran, you know, he's been Might around. Might even be his eighth. He's been, he's been here, you know, so. And he's had, what, over three weeks now yeah. to get himself going. I mean, you, he's still, you know. Just about three weeks. You, you, Because you, it's like, all right, you can be prepared to play football and, like, mentally ready, physically ready to play 20 plays, 30 plays, 60 plays. There's, like, no way to prepare for that. Nowadays, <laughs> Jonathan, you get, seven, you get 75 a right. game now. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, Adoree might be ready. He might have been ready last week for 20. Maybe he's ready for 40 this week. But if he has to play 60, 65, 70, hopefully not 75 plays, then so be it. I heard him talking, you know, when he first got here, you know, he's ready to go even if he's not, like, physically. Right. He's going to go out there and do it. But he's a pro, you know, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he does out there. I would suspect, and this is, again, strictly a guess on my part, uh, if they feel good about his potential reps, maybe you start him and say, okay, when you need a, when you need a break – let us know. Raise your hand. Come out. You need a break. Fine. Uh, and basically try to go with him with as many snaps as he can give them. And if it turns out to be 40, 45, 50, 55, fine. Have Cordell Flott ready. Yeah. So that at any time, at any series, if you got to make that change out, make the change out. But I suspect that Jackson will get the bulk of the reps there. Yeah. Let's just hope. Cleveland doesn't reproduce what they did last week and have an open and 16-play drive. Well, how about Dory the Jackson Giants' the offense field? control the ball? Right. Which would allow a Jackson to uh, have a lot less on his plate Yeah, yeah. when the Giants are on defense. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. You yeah, know? that would and help. Look, Dory has played some good football, you know, and he'll be, he's going to be a good contributor for the Giants. You know, the Giants need, you know, as many bodies as they can 
You know, it happens that people get hurt, you know, early in the season. But that's why you sign a guy like Adoree Jackson. Yeah. You know, just for this reason. You know, your, your second corner goes down, Adoree's waiting in the wing, and he gets in there. So he's not just the locker room guy. He's not just the in the meeting guy. Now he's out there on the field, you know, actually about to participate and get a, a bulk of the plays for defense. On, With the hope on, that on he'll Sunday. play at the 2022 level instead <clears> of the 2023 <throat> level. He was very inconsistent last year for a number of reasons. All right, the other item, Isaiah Simmons is back from being personally excused uh, by Coach Brian Dable because of whatever reasons they were. They were kept uh, away from us, but he is back and he is out at practice. I just saw him out there, and he's in full gear and he's working. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. Because uh, you know you don't you don't want to be down a, a mobile linebacker who also plays on special teams. Yeah. Hopefully everything is okay with him. You know, yeah. usually if, if we somebody don't, we don't know. misses something that's not like health related. I'm not, you know, hopefully it's not too serious, but hopefully whatever it is, it's over. And he's moved past it, you know, and he can put it in the past. Because you never know. You know, I've had some issues with my family, my daughter. Sure. Health at, you know, at times where I had to leave or you know, not come for a day. Because you don't have guys missing days. You know, like that doesn't happen in the NFL. Right. You know, uh, nobody has an unexcused absence. Like that doesn't happen. So if somebody misses a day and it's not for health reasons, it's for something, hopefully it's not too serious. Probably something involving family or something like that. So, I, you know, you know, whatever that he went through, hopefully it's over. Hopefully he's past it and he can focus on, on this week's game. Coach Dable already saying he is a part of the game plan against okay. Cleveland. Because he only missed one day, right? Uh, he missed a day and a half. A day and a half. A okay. day and a half. And Dable said he would be part of the game plan this week. They expect yeah. him to play. So it's not a situation where he missed some time and now they're going to dock him and not play him, right. which does happen in this league. Yes. But mm -hmm. that's not happening in this case. Yeah, that's good. Because a day and a half of week of practice, that's like basically half the week. Well, yeah, because nowadays week. it's only three days. Three days, yeah. That's really mm -hmm. all you work. So it's basically half the week. But I'm pretty sure he got caught up. You know, they can – now with the iPads and everything, they could just send it out whatever clips that they wanted them to see that maybe some things that they had to cover or he can stay after a little late, you know, and they work with him to get him caught up. All right. Now, we don't have the Browns injury report yet. Again, that's not going to come out officially till this afternoon, but I'm sure the other guys this week have talked about it. They're banged up, Jonathan. Yeah. They, they, they've they got um, both of their tackles, Wills and Conklin, have been practicing on a limited basis, but both guys are dealing with knee injuries. Consequently, in game one against Dallas, Cleveland gave up six sacks. In game two against Jacksonville, uh, they gave up two sacks. So they've given up eight sacks in the first two weeks. Uh, they have not run the ball nearly as effectively as they would have liked. We know that Deshaun Watson is not a quarterback who handles pressure very well. And that's been the case. He's yet to throw for 200 yards in a game during the first two matchups of the season. Uh, Amari Cooper has been nearly invisible through the first two games, which is amazing considering, you know, he's had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. In fact, four out of the last five and seven overall in his career. He is a legit, legit X receiver. And, again, at this point in time, he's been virtually invisible for them. Uh, Najoku is out. I believe he's got an ankle, so so you don't have to worry about the Pro Bowl tight end at least yeah. in this weekend's game. And then the other the other injuries, uh, Miles Garrett, <laughs> they say he's got a foot injury. So you know what he did last week? Played 41 snaps and had a strip sack. <laughs> 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 he did that in game one and then did it again in game two. And oh, by the way, he's got a foot injury. Okay. Uh, you know what? You got to block him. I mean, you're talking <laughs> about the defensive MVP from last year. Yes. The guy is a physical freak, probably probably more of a mutant than a human being. <laughs> if you guys can see him, the guy is super. He's super athletic. He can wreck the game. The Giants will have to have a good game yeah. plan for him. He's one of those type of guys that left tackle, chip, tight end, double, whatever you need to do to make sure he doesn't have a big impact on the game. Because and he will flop, too. You don't want to hear that guy's name. You He'll, don't want to hear his name. They, they'll flop him in Zadarius Smith. You remember Zadarius, uh, former Viking, among yep. other teams. They'll flop those guys. So it's not just Thomas. It's also going to have to be Illuminor. Yeah, ready, ready to deal with. I that saw guy. Dalvin Tomlinson's name. That's pretty cool. Da he's still, Dalvin's he's still playing, playing left some defensive good ball. tackle. Yeah, yeah. he plays some good ball. Uh, and I, I actually, I think that's a key matchup for the Giants. Runyon against Tomlinson because if the Giants, interesting thought. And and let me just 
put that aside for a second and just tell you also Denzel Ward's dealing with a shoulder. Only played 11 snaps last week. And he is a really, really yeah, terrific cover, cover yeah. corner. Uh, that is very interesting because it would make things easier for Jones and the receivers if Ward is out of the lineup. But, but go, to go back for a second, the interesting part about Runyon and Tomlinson in this matchup, Runyon talked to the media, I guess it was yesterday or the day before. I can't remember. I was in the locker room with, him, with a few other reporters. And he was emphasizing how the offensive line came together in the second game of the season, better pass protection, but more importantly, better running the ball. Yeah. Remember, Singletary had 95 yards, averaged six yards a carry against Washington. Mm-hmm. He was saying, that's got to be our identity, yeah. which a lot of offensive lines will talk about. But he was taking a little further, saying, no, no, not just for that game or for this game, but for the whole season, we as a line have to dictate how this season's going to go. Yeah. And he said flat out, he said, I know that there's going to be teams this year that we're playing that are going to have a really good pass rush. Well, we could take pressure off ourselves, and this is not rocket science now, but you don't hear a lot of offensive linemen always talk this way. He said we could take pressure off ourselves and kind of reduce those pass rushers if we just pound it and run the ball and wear them out and wear them down so that later on in the game they don't have the energy to come after our quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And that makes an awful lot of sense. And maybe, maybe the Giants, uh, you know, could could start running up Runyon's back a little bit more, and uh, and and, and uh, not uh, not Runyon's back, but maybe Van Roten's back because Van Roten's going to be opposite Tomlinson. Okay. Van Roten's the right, right guard. Tomlinson's the left defensive tackle. Yep. They play a four four man front. Right. So Van Roten is going to be up against Tomlinson. Maybe, maybe that's what you do. Yeah, I think both of these teams probably going to have a similar game plan, especially like initially to start. I think. You know, if you look at Cleveland and what they've done over the past few years with, you know, the tremendous running back that they had, Nick Chubb, who is out for how much longer he's uh, out for? Because he was on injured reserve, right? Yeah, well, they were thinking that when we were talking to people during training camp, they figured at least half the season. Oh, wow. That's tough. Because we all love Saquon here. Well, we loved him here. It is a different story now, but you all understand the type of back he was for the Giants. And Chubb. Nick Chubb is of that caliber. Heading Maybe even player. better. Jerome Ford's <laughs> not no slouch either, though. He's well, running the ball, I think, with some some success, and I I just think the mentalities of these two do these two teams, you know, Giants being zero and two, Cleveland being one and one with the with a big win against Jacksonville, I think they want to establish the run early, make it a little bit cleaner for the quarterback, give him some more manageable third downs, being better on first and second down with the ball, and then if you can run the football, that opens up the play action game, which. Yeah, we've seen it from from Dayball's offense, and I think Cleveland wants to do that as well, and get your playmaker, who is the quarterback, not just in the pocket, but maybe outside the pocket, and have that run pass option, not a called RPO, but more of a you know rollout, something play action wise, a where they can do something outside the pocket, something similar to what we saw last night from Aaron Rodgers. You know, Aaron Rodgers, he. he he kind of did a lot on his own. I don't know if you saw the game last night. He looked really good last yeah, night. But again, yeah. the Patriots also didn't finish when they got after him. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, there's no question that Deshaun Watson, who in the, I don't know how many last something games that he has played, has not been nearly the same player that he was before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's hope it doesn't happen this week. Well, because I it. remember Deshaun Watson. A few years ago, well, even in the playoffs, they were beating the Chiefs in the first half pretty handily, and he looked amazing in the first half, and then the Chiefs did what the Chiefs do and ended up winning the game. But. Don't let him have the opportunity to use a balanced attack. Right. That's the whole thing. Keep the pressure on him right now because he's got to be feeling – He's got to be feeling a little bit of this here. Yeah, the air, the air's coming out of his throat just a little bit yeah. because they've been they've been asking him to do more than right now he's been capable of, and and when you make that team one dimensional, as it is the case with a lot of teams, but Deshaun Watson is clearly a guy who needs that running game to support him. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. The the Giants have to defensively, you know, uh, they have to respond from last week, giving up 215 rushing yards on the ground. Can't give up big plays losing, in the, gr- in the ground. To basically, a, you know, not basically, he's a rookie quarterback, you know, and he was able to do things through the air and with his legs to extend drives. 
Deshaun Watson is a similar type of you know player as Jaden Daniels. You know, he's a guy that wants to create plays. He wants to extend plays. You know, he relies on a run game because play action works for guys like that that likes to get outside the pocket and have no problem running the football. What we can allow, like you said, have the Cleveland Browns have a complimentary football game that incorporates the run game, mm-hmm. the pass game, the play action game, and the quarterback scramble, Yeah, which is what we saw from the commanders last week. That's how the Giants mm-hmm. basically lost on defense. They were tight in the red zone. You can't give up seven field goals and, you know what I mean, and, and, and not give your offense more chances with the football. Because if the defense would have got a couple of stops here and there, the game would have been a little bit more lopsided on our behalf, on, on the Giants' behalf. Yeah. And, and when I play defense, we will always say, we need to get a turnover. We need to get the ball back to our offense. Didn't get any last week. Right. And you didn't get stops. You know, because even... No punts. No punts. Even a midfield stop or even a little bit on a plus territory and you you get a punt, you're still in decent field position after a punt as an offense starting. You know, so the Giants could not do that. And that's why you saw the statistic was the only game to a, a team to allow no touchdowns, score three touchdowns, and lose in regulation. Never That's how before. you have something like that happen. I know. You know, and it's it's an interesting way that the Giants be finding crazy ways to lose games. Okay, so real fast, and I'm going to get to your calls in just one more second. I want to get one more take here from Jonathan because he was a defensive player. And talking to Shane Bowen yesterday, and it's something that, you know, it was obvious if you looked at the film. Giants had too many missed tackles which you have to fix here now in week three, all right? We talk about how the preseason extends into the regular season. Well, it's time that they get on the horse. They got to stop the missed tackles, and it's got to stop now. And the other thing that they were not doing very, very well, uh, they had too many missed run fits where guys were either over-pursuing or trying to cover up somebody else's lane or slot and got caught out of their own. And that, that is inexcusable because mentally – as Bowen said, do your job, know where your fit is, and just take care of your job. That's it. Do yours. Don't try to be covering up for other people. That's when you get caught. Yep. And there's a little bit of uh, timing-wise with those with those gaps. You know, uh, safeties are coming down. Linebackers are fl- flowing given the, uh, the backfield set and what they're doing. A lot of times last week, um, the commanders put the Giants in a, a single back type front where it's just a single everybody has their own gap and it's not two people in a the gap they're not inserting two people in a gap what means everybody has to hold down their gap mm-hmm. if you're a little bit late dumb running backs Brian Robinson every single running back in this league is very talented enough to find an open hole right that's the minimum like that's a prerequisite for a running back what they do after they find that open hole what do you do when they get to the open hole that is the equation that the Giants didn't do last week they couldn't get them down. They couldn't tackle. The angles was a little off. Uh, they were a little bit late. And that's why you saw the consistent run game from the commanders. I mean, their backs, they had 215 total. Their backs had like 185 or something like that. And look, the Giants need to do better or it will be a long day because Cleveland wants to run the football. That's what they want to yep. do. Yes, they have a good quarterback or you know, potentially a good quarterback. He was at, good at one point of his career. But they want to make it easy for him. How you make it easy for a quarterback, run the football. The play action, it'd be a little bit more, the defense would be a little bit more susceptible to play action. And then also, when you're all focused on the run, the quarterback can do more things through the air and with his legs as well. I've always told people over the years that my magic number on missed tackles, because as Shane Bowen said, there's going to be some. Very rarely you're going to come out of the game with no missed these, tackles these on defense. These players on offense are very talented. <laughs> they get paid, right? Yeah. They get paid. My number over the years has usually been six. If your team allows six missed tackles during the course of the game, that's about where I can still digest it. Once that number gets up, you know, eight, nine, ten, especially double digits, now now I'm getting nauseous. Yeah. That can't happen. No. And and the problem was, as Bowen explained, during those first two weeks, when the Giants have missed tackles, they're turning into not three- or four-yard gains off of missed tackles. They're becoming seven-, eight-, nine-yard gains and bigger. Yeah. Explosive runs off of missed tackles. The other teams are taking advantage of every missed tackle and every missed gap. Like you said, they find them. Yeah. They get paid. And, and if I'm not mistaken, 
commanders look, and I, you know, I watched the game over again, and it, it just looked like what they were trying to do was to get to the outside or get to the edges where their defensive backs were, the safeties and the corners. Not that they can't fit in run plays as good, but they're not as natural as a linebacker, not as natural as an in-the-box type safety. Um, but I, I got to talk about this before we take any calls or anything. Move okay. forward. Drew Phillips. Whoa. He plays downhill. Whoa, bro. As a As a slot <laughs> corner. A slot corner plays down. I spoke to bro, him about look, this yesterday. He's got goosebumps when I said yeah. his name. The kid is a phenomenal player. Yeah. Like, I didn't – Remember we talked about him in, in training camp, how he was basically getting in, get, getting into scuffles with the Detroit Lions. Very physical guy. And I said, I like that. Mm-hmm. He shows that fight. He shows that he's willing to battle. and He'll do anything. And that's exactly what you're seeing from him. The kid is making plays. He almost plays with reckless abandon. Pretty sure he knocked himself out in the sideline. I remember I think I called it during the game. You know, the kid's playing, the kid's playing at a very high level. And that type of energy and that type of level of like just tenaciousness tenacity whatever yeah, that's yeah, fine right it is contagious and that's what the other guys need to be playing with because sometimes not that you know the guys aren't playing up to what how they're supposed to be playing but when you see somebody he's sacrificing his body out there you see him doing it play in and play out you feel some type of way that that gets you going man Think about this. He's not a linebacker, and he's not a defensive lineman, but he wants to hit somebody on every play. Bro, he was in the backfield. Multiple plays from five yards deep behind the ball. I ask you this, folks, and I ask you, when is the last time you heard of somebody describe a nickel corner as a downhill defender? I I can't remember. That's what he is. The, he's uh, downhill. I know the nickel from um, Cincinnati. I forgot his name, but he was a good nickel for a long time. He was downhill, kind of one of those type of guys. But Drew's playing with – I mean, he's he's effective in the passing game. He's effective in the run game. He's making very good decisions on – you know, sometimes when the quarterback's out the pocket and he's going towards you, there is a decision that he needs to be made. Am I coming out of coverage or am I staying in coverage? And he made that, and he got a sack on one of those plays. The kid's decision-making has been phenomenal. And like you said, I love the way he's playing downhill. And he's covering, I think, fairly well, too. And the penalty on him was was BS, I think, too. I didn't care for the penalty either. Yeah, it was, it was a crucial penalty, but it was I think it was BS. He got run over. Got ran over. The best part of football season? Checking out the post-game stats. Which wideout scored more than two touchdowns? Which QBs threw for less than 350 yards? Think you can pick who will do what before kickoff? Then play Pick 6 from DraftKings, an official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app, select between two and six players, and choose if they'll have more or less of a stat. It's that simple. And for all first-time Pick 6 players, check this out. New customers play $5 on your first pick set, get $50 in Pick 6 credits. Download the new DraftKings Pick 6 app now and use code DK1. That's code DK1 for new customers to play $5 on your first pick set. Get $50 in Pick 6 credits only on DraftKings Pick 6. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org in Connecticut. Must be 18 plus. Age and eligibility restrictions vary by jurisdiction. Pick 6 not available everywhere, including New York and Ontario. Void where prohibited. One per new customer. Non-withdrawable. Pick 6 credits expire in six months. Limited time offer. See terms at pick6.draftkings.com slash promos. And I didn't see a grab. He just fell down and then the he got tight end run fell over, over him. Yeah, he got run a, over. Not a good call. Now, the official who made the call was t- was behind him. So to him, I could understand why from that angle he might have thought yeah. that um, that Phillips had helped tug the tight I, end down. I, th- I thought it should have been a no call. Because I, it's within I five thought it should have been a no call, it's too. It's within five yards. I agree. The contact was legal. And it cost Brian Burns a sack. Yeah, right. It, it, the contact was legal because it was in five yards. But I thought and, so. And this is what happens, too, and this happened a lot on special teams. When when you think you get a pancake or you bring somebody to the ground, they'll call holding on that. So they they would say on special teams, don't pancake a guy. Right. Like if you're dominating him, keep him up. Because the perception if, is that if you he goes a foul. to the ground. Most of the time, they're not watching you. They see kind of the aftermath, 
yeah. then they throw it. So it's like it's kind of a bang bang type of play, but in that situation, it ended up being a huge play against the Giants last week. All right, real quick, the Giants Huddle Podcast is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the New York Giants. You got all kinds of interviews there with Giants and NFL dignitaries. And don't forget, Big Blue fans can get the most out of every moment with Citizens. Learn more at citizensbank.com slash Giants. Jonathan, you know who was on the huddle? Jonathan Vilma. Vilma? Yeah. Buddy of yours from the Saints days. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's my guy. Check it out. It's available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Again, at Giants.com slash podcasts. All right. Time to get to the phone calls. Let's see who's up first. It is Big Ed in Maryland. Bring it, Big Ed. What do you got today? Hey, what's up, Big Paulie? How are you doing? Oh, it's the Oh, it's the it was, uh, it, it, it was not a pleasant afternoon down in the uh, Landover area last Sunday, that's for sure. That's because you guys did not get with me, so we could have had ribs and chicken and pulled pork and all that after the meal, after the game. That's why. Let me tell you something, Big okay. Ed. There was no appetite after that game. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. There was no appetite at all. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. Is that Jonathan? Yes, sir. What's up, brother? What's up, world champion? How you been, man? I'm fantastic, brother. How are you? Oh, man, hurting and almost happy at the same time, you know. It was like seeing that game was like, I actually saw it. So seeing it and feeling like, okay, if we just went and lost our kicker, we should have won the game. Yeah. That's how I feel. You know? I think so, but too. It's like, but it's like this. Play much better than the first game. So we got upswing to look at. On offense, but, on offense. Defensively, they took right, a step back exactly. for sure. And then, and look, and to answer y'all question, because y'all was talking to each other, y'all didn't hear us yet, Aaron Ross, that's the last nickel corner we've had that played that good. And that's what we need out of Drew He Phillips. wasn't so that Drew physical, though. He was not no, that physical. No, but he made but he made great plays, yeah, though. He, he was did. down south. Aaron Ross is a great corner. See, that's what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. See, yeah. he was great on that run, on that run, um, <clears throat> The run, what is it? Oh, the oh. I don't know where you're going, Big Ed, yeah. but but I don't remember yeah. Aaron Ross being very physical no, either. either. No, no, he wasn't. It, he didn't have to be physical. He played that down south. He ran that down south way because he could cover well, and he played well playing the run. That's the key to Drew Phillips this Sunday: play the run and do a run blitz. That's the word we're looking for. There you, you go. Want a run blitz with him. That way, you have somebody in the back covering the deep ball just in case. Right. Because if we got the line covered and somehow the line linebackers are covering well, then the only thing's left is secondary. So we got to be able to uh, penetrate that run, man, continue that run gap coverage. That's what it's about. It's still about the run gap coverage. All right. Until now, Big Ed, remember one thing, though. Please remember one thing. If you get too over-aggressive – with sending mm-hmm. a corner blitz with Drew Phillips, then that means uh, the slot receiver, Elijah Moore, is is going mm-hmm. to be able to hurt you off of hot reads if he and Watson are able to diagnose it in time. Mm-hmm. That's the danger there. Right. But see, it's when you call a blitz. You don't do it all the time. All right. You gotta all play right. that standard. We got to go back to the championship way when Jonathan played. <laughs> we had two safeties in the back. We had four line, four linebackers, four linemen, and two corners. And we play hard and play, keep it in that consistency. I had to show my son this, Paulie. I'm going to leave after this one, but good luck this weekend. But I had to show my son this, right, because he kept losing on uh, Matt. And I was wondering, like, why you keep losing? I looked at the defense he was playing. I was like, oh, no wonder. You're playing three when you're supposed to be playing two. Soon as he changed the defense, he started winning. Change the defense a bit. Not 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 change position. Change the style of play we play towards them. Then we got a chance. Now offense, we just got to keep scoring more points. Yeah. That was good. But we just got to score more points. That's it. Yeah. So we averaging 21, 24 points a game. Defense can hold at 17. We're, we're pretty good. We should be right where we need to be in midseason. But it ain't gonna help until we start winning. So we got to keep got to get winning that first one. Then we can figure out the rest after that. Nothing can be else to be figured out until you get past that win, coach. Indeed. Head coach. That's it. That's right, so all I got. I love all right, you guys. Big Ed. Polly hey, to hey, next week, Polly. Hopefully hey, we party up for a big win. Enjoy the meal on yeah. Sunday, okay? 
<laughs> All right. Be good. Big Ed's a lot of fun, man. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy talking to him. And and honestly, you know, the one thing that that's that's really kind of disappointing is that they did play so well in the red zone last week. When you when you hold a team six for six, forcing them to kick field goals on six trips down to your fifteen or deeper, that is one heck of a job. I mean, think about that. That team is 15 yards or less from your goal line six different times, and they can't get it past you know the goal line. They can't get it to the end zone. Yeah. You understand this as a oh, defensive yeah, for player. Sure. 100%. That's they had eight runs inside the red zone, total of 24 yards on those eight runs. So despite all the explosive plays in the middle of the field, when it got down to really crunch time, Giants defense in the red zone was really good. Yep, yep. And listen. It's a good base to build off of. You know, like if your red zone defense can be that consistent for the whole year, you will get stops, you know, and they're not going to have 10, 11, 12 play drives and kick a field goal. You will get a stop. They will make a mistake. You will make them make a mistake. Like they have to starts. Consi- right. You have to consistently get better. You know, I'm looking, like I said, Drew Phillips, the way he plays, I think, look, if, if Dayball didn't do this yet, Show every single person on the team the way Drew played. I'm talking about every single play where he was just running, hitting, when he got ran over, play all of that. This is the type of level of play that we need. This yeah. is the attitude that we need. And if you get 11 guys playing like that, the Giants have a good enough roster to compete with any single team in the NFL. You have to play well. You have to play mistake-free football. You have to be uh, uh, disciplined. And you have to attack on offense and defense. They have the roster to do it. Malik Neighbors showed us he's an incredible wide receiver. But they got to figure out how to do it for four quarters. That's what we haven't seen from the Giants. I feel like the last two years, the Giants haven't put together a true four-quarter game where your good players are playing for four quarters. Because if you look at who did well in the game, Malik Neighbors, Josh Singletary, both of those guys made costly mistakes at the end of the game. Drew Phillips, even though it was a – Bang, bang type of holding play with the holding call. That was a huge penalty, you know, for the Giants. It was. And those were the three, one of the three, the two, like three of the best players last week's game, and they all kind of made mistakes later in the game. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to, you know, because mistakes will happen, but the timing of the mistakes, the later the worse. You know, and all of those were at least the end of the third quarter to the fourth quarter. I tell people, especially with rookies, but this goes for every player in the league, they are going to make X number of mistakes week in and week out. It's going to happen. It's not even just the timing of it. It's does your opponent take advantage of them. You know this Mm -hmm. because you were in defensive room for over a decade. There are times when there are guys running free in that secondary and they got nothing but the end zone between them and the ball. And you know what? Because your pass rush got home or because the quarterback misfired on the ball, you got away with it. Mm-hmm. And you can wipe your brow and say, oh, wow, okay, we, we got lucky on that one. All right, it's okay. Let's line up. Every single game is full of opportunities for both teams to make huge plays and sometimes it just comes down to does the other team see it and take advantage of it? Yeah. And that can be the difference in you winning or losing the game. Yeah, that, that happens. And that happens every game. It happens every game. That happens every game. So many fans don't realize mm-hmm. that. But they're, they're going to – sometimes it's simply a matter of not just the timing, but did the other team have the right play called for the time that you screwed up your defense, yeah. you busted a coverage, or you had the wrong defense on the field, yep. and they saw it, and then they executed. And then you lose. Yeah, yeah. That's how the game goes, man. That's how the game goes, you know. And the, the game – listen, the, the one of the things that – and you talked about this earlier with the run fits and stuff. One of the biggest like errors you could have is a mental error on, in the game. Oh, it's it's cause, because it's like you you're playing Horrible. with ten other guys, and everybody is accountable for where they're supposed to be at, offensively and defensively. And if you're not where you're supposed to be at, these players on offense, they're the running backs are so good they'll find that they'll find that hole. The quarterbacks are so good they'll find that you're not in the right spot or landmark or two inches wide or late to come down like. These quarterbacks, these players on offense, like 
these guys are getting they're getting skilled they're getting more talented they're taking like offenses like they're taking it I mean what Tom Brady did Drew Brees all of those guys they kind of set the blueprint on how you take like control of the whole offense but even if you don't do that a quarterback can look right now and see a safety down with them oh he's gonna blitz like these guys are high level Mm -hmm. you know type of players Deshaun Watson I put him in that category too he hasn't performed to that but if you rewind I think three years ago when he was at his like peak the kid was one of the best uh, quarterbacks in the NFL am I wrong he had a great season And, uh, and so for me I don't want him to get comfortable. That's right. And get back to that again against the Giants because it will be a long day because he was phenomenal. Back to the calls. Jason in New Haven, you're next on Big Blue Kickoff Live. Hello. Hey, Paul, Paul and John, how you guys doing? Hi, how are you? Jonathan, excuse me, Jonathan, excuse me. How you guys doing? Um, I haven't talked to you guys since the before the regular season, but uh, – uh, first game was a disaster, um, of course. We won't have to, you know, rehash that. Uh, the game, I felt we played better. Um, and a few things that I'm excited about, um, you know, I like to stay on the positive side of things. Two big things that I've been looking for going into this regular season. And one thing has been the whole line. Um, I know, I know, fans or maybe some other people be like, oh well, we played Washington and we played Minnesota, and it seems to me that Minnesota is actually really good the way they kind of beat up on the Niners. So maybe, maybe the Vikings are better than we thought they were um, coming into the season. Um, Cause they, to me, they, they pretty, they pretty much whooped the Niners in my opinion. But anyway, yep. um, and then the, and then the, you know, but for the most part, um, I think the old line has been, I don't want to say great because it's only a two game sample size. Yeah. They gave up, they gave up some pressures in the first game. Um, but I thought they played clean football, the Singletary. They gave him massive, massive holes. Um, and this is the most comfortable I saw Jones in a pocket. I mean, there were some times where he was patting the ball in this Washington game. I'm like, I don't ever really remember seeing Jones pat the ball like this in the pocket. Um, so that, to me, has been um, a big, big positive, man. I'm just so happy that it seems right now, like we have to see how the course of the year goes, but – it seems to me we have a pretty good, you know, on route to a pretty good offense, offensive line. So I'm just knocking on wood. Hopefully those guys uh, stay stay healthy and stay the course. And then Jonathan, like you said, Drew Phillips has been – his play has just been awesome. Um, I didn't really know too much about him when we drafted him. You know, that's why they have, you know, Joe Shane and those guys doing all the work on these players coming out of college. But um, he's been just – I mean, he hits like a ton of bricks – um, he has good feet. Um, the way he was sniffing out some of those um, passes behind the line of scrimmage nice were just—it mm-hmm. was just—it was just—it was just great to see. Um, and you really don't see nickel cornerbacks with that kind of physicality. I can't really no, remember the last ball point was nickel. Earlier. Yeah, I can't remember the last corner I've seen that's had that kind of physicality. Like he really, really hits. Like when he gets his hands on you, for the most part, you're going down. Um, one thing I want to say, guys, and I'll take it off the air, a, I don't want to say a negative, but maybe a constructive criticism has been the defense, which you guys have mentioned already. Week one, you know, I'll give that a mulligan. Um, you know, first game, new defense, you know, uh, some miscommunications. So I'll give the first game a mulligan. You know, Shane Bowen is new. They're still trying to learn his defense. What was disappointing to me, Paul and Jonathan, was – I played ball in college. I'm not saying I'm an aficionado. You, you know, you guys covered it a long time, Jonathan. You played in the highest level, and you know, and Paul, you covered it for years. But I do know a little something. And my confusion with the game plan was: all right, we're playing a rookie quarterback in his second game. My question is: why are the corner? And I know he plays a bend and don't break defense. I get it. A lot of zone, but. Washington's receivers don't really scare me. I mean, they have McLaurin, who's been a really good NFL receiver, um, and they have a few other guys that are, you know, pretty good. But I just was curious why they was playing so far off the line of scrimmage and to effectively stop, because that's what Washington was doing. They were throwing quick outs, and they were throwing some screens, 
that's all Jaden Daniels was doing outside of a few broken, you know, broken runs he had. He didn't really kill us with his legs. I think he had like 40 yards, which, you know, accumulation to the rest of the run game, you know, hurt. But I, I just didn't understand why they was playing so far off. I'm not, and I'm not saying they had to play pressure jam, but some of some of the way they, they was like seven, eight yards off the line of scrimmage. And I'm like, we have a, we're playing a rookie quarterback. Let's let's you know get up in their face a little bit. And I think to some of the big run games because the safeties and the corners are playing so far off. You know, and I, I'm not a big fan of our defensive line room outside of um, Dexter. I've said that going into the in off season, the preseason. Not a big fan of the the guys we have in that room, but that's just my opinion. And I just never understood why Bowen, and maybe you guys can explain to me as a fan. Like I said, I play college ball. I know a little something, but maybe there's something I'm missing. You have a rookie quarterback who's really, really going to only damage you with his legs. And I just, I, I just didn't understand the game plan. So I want to thank you guys for taking my call, and maybe you guys could, you know, enlighten me why we're playing so far off, especially with receivers that are not. You know, you know McLaurin is good, but I wouldn't say Washington has the best receiving core, or top half of the league. I think they're pretty average receiving core on top of having a rookie quarterback. So All right, Jason. I want to thank you guys for taking my call. Thank, thank you. Be well. Thanks, call Jason. again. I will say this: uh, Tay Banks, according to Sports Radar, was only targeted six times on the day. Gave up four passes for like twenty-seven yards or twenty-two yards, I think it was on the day. Tay Banks played extremely well the other day. Uh, the other guys in the secondary, uh, they gave up too much room. Yeah. And he has a good point, but I, I want to give a little context uh, on, you know, different defenses require different alignments, different, st- you know, stances and different distances from, you know, we're talking about defensive backs, where you're aligned away from your, you know, the receiver against you. <clears throat> but the situation, like, for example, right? In a regular defense, I'm lining four and a half yards off the ball, right? Right. We call cover three, you got the safety rolling down. Nothing changes for me. We just have an extra guy in the run fit. If it's third and one, I'm not lining up at four and a half yards. No. I'm getting a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. I am going to go for the run fake. They will get me if they run play action. It happens. Situations change and manipulate defenses mm-hmm. from pre snap alignments to what you're doing, what you're looking at as soon as the ball snapped, to what happens, you know, a, a second or two after the ball is snapped. Those things change. So what I, I Jason point, the Giants have to be better situationally and know that, look, if it's third and 10, or excuse me, third and six, don't give them 10 yard cushion. Right. You know, they're gonna run at the sticks most likely. You know, so it's like, you do have to be situationally aware and it might manipulate the defense that is a, a, a way that you got to change it a way that you're not used to because of the situation. You know, like cover two, you're playing a little bit more aggressive on, on short yardage. You, you're a little bit more deep to short with long yardage. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's different ways you play your, your, your stance, number one, and your technique. So I hear what you're saying, but the Giants, we all understand the Giants have to be better situationally because there are going to be situations like fourth and four, late in the game, what do you do? Don't have a kicker. You go to your best player on offense situationally got to catch that ball you know what I mean so it's like there are things that the Giants will do well but when it comes down to it those gotta have it plays at the end your alignment needs to be right you have to understand the situation and then it comes down to you making the play yeah there's no question about that I mean Noah Brown um, you know ran a simple in cut on Cordell Flott that got Washington across the 50 on the game winning drive and Flott was giving him a lot of cushion and then when the it cut came, he got turned around yeah. and twisted the wrong way yeah, before he could recover. And and the thing about Cordell, and and I happen to be a big Cordell Flot guy. You guys know. I've been all over him for a long time. I like his skill set. In that play, if, if he's given up that much room, if that's what he's really supposed to do, well, then the one thing that's inexcusable is to get turned around. Right, yeah. I mean, he yeah. just doubled his, his dilemma but when he got turned. That's a great play that you pick because that one is like maybe that's what you're supposed to do in the middle of the game you know the situation is not gotta have it and you're just you know you'll tackle him once he catches the ball that one 
like situationally, you got to understand where you're at, where you at, how much time you got left. All of those things factor in on how aggressively you're playing that route, you know. And I think situationally, they just the Giants have to keep uh, moving forward. And it's always going to come down to what did you do in this situation? What did you do in the red zone? Giants played the great in the red zone last week, you know, like situationally. The Giants have, they're going to win and lose, you know, but I think at the end of the games, those situations, like when games are close, you know, every single situation becomes that more important when the games are close. And you're sitting there like, all right, third and five, look at the sticks. You know, like you're making sure that everybody's on the same page. And I'm talking about, you know, defensively or offensively. Everybody's on the same page. Another thing, don't jump. Right, because they can get you with a hard count. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. things like that that present itself in certain situations got to be vocalized, got to be communicated, and got to be executed. Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like you know, to check the date of the big game first before you accidentally buy tickets on your twentieth wedding anniversary and have to spend the next twenty years of your marriage making up for it. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. We got about 15 minutes left on the program. 201-939-4513. Abdul is in Minneapolis, and you're next on BBKL. Hello. Hi. So the, the last two phone calls have basically covered everything I wanted to say, but I'll, I'll try to. <laughs> Sorry. Too, 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 too repetitive. But so um, I, I haven't listened to you guys all week. I, you know, I have to work sometimes, you know. So, um, um, so Monday after that game, like, I, I've been a fan since 84. Just to put it in perspective, I have never felt as dejected and apathetic about the New York Giant organization as I did Monday morning. Just uh, about a, some, some of the decision and the process that, that led up to, you know, having no kicker, et cetera, et cetera. I, I mean, we, we don't need to rehash everything. But as most things happen, as the week went on, I did to see, I did start to see some positives happening, so I became less apathetic. And that's mostly on the offensive side of the ball. Um, there's a great uh, podcast called Talking Giants where they go over the offensive line and uh, they really pointed out how uh, the new coach and some of the new players have really individually maybe not been great, but how they're working as a team together. And that's been, you know, not since under Eli, the offensive line has looked this well. So that gave me, you know, some hope. And Devin Singletary. And uh, just the way Daniel Jones bounced back and had a, had a game. So there's certain things on the offense that made me um, just, you know, not as like, what was me, the sky is falling. on the But the defensive side of the ball, I still have, I still don't feel good. I'm getting James Betcher vibes. Um, but it's game two. But as the guy who just hung up mentioned about, you know, how far off they were playing, there's certain, there's certain schematics um, and design of that defense that they didn't make any changes throughout that game. And that's what really made me worried. That they weren't, you know, you go in, you see that they're running a short game on your screens, and they didn't change. They didn't make, um, what's what I'm looking for, uh, any kind of halftime um, adjustments. Mm-hmm. Adjustments, thank you. And that, 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 that you know, and it, I know it's only the second game. I remember under Spags, it took, it took some time for the defense to change to get to get took a to year. under Spags also. <laughs> yeah. So, as I said, once again, as a Giants fan, you always, as Sunday gets closer, the more positive you get. You know, so that's, how, I'm, that's where I'm right now. But um, do you think schematically there's an issue with the defense or is it a, like, the, the, the players in the team or middle, middle of both or you or do you see them progressing? I guess that's my question on defense. Well, I think there's uh, there's definitely some improvements that need to be made, you know. But what I saw from the Giants in Week Two, uh, I left that game better than I left the Week One game. I felt like, you know, after that Week One game, I was like, man, if this continues, this is going to be a rough year, you know. And then last week, I saw an improved offense. I saw an improved offensive line. I saw it. 
an emergence of a wide receiver in Malik Neighbors. I saw Daniel Jones a lot more comfortable in the pocket. He looked so uncomfortable. Week one looked a lot better. Week two, I expect him to play better and look more comfortable. Week three, let's not forget to begin the season. Not too much time in the preseason. He did, is coming off an injury. Not using an excuse. I'm just using it as that's exactly what's happening with Daniel Jones. There's other quarterbacks coming off of injuries around the league that I started a little slow this year, but that's what happens when you miss a prolonged period of time and you get thrown back out there. For the defense, I look, I, I love the way they built the defense this year. I think they have some pieces that they need to utilize a little bit better. Uh, like Isaiah Simmons, I think should be playing a little bit more. I think he's a, a talented uh, defensive back, linebacker, whatever you want to call him. I think he's a great athlete and he can contribute uh, you know, very well. But if they can turn up and, and, and play like Drew Phillips, I think this defense can be phenomenal, but it does take a time, take a little bit of time to gel. I talked about earlier the run fits being a little late. Sometimes when you're in a new defense, you might be a little late because it's new. It's not as familiar. One step could be a split second to where that running back gets that hole. <clears throat> Your familiarity week to week, where you recognize those formations, you recognize those plays, and you get there a little bit faster. So instead of giving up two, three, five, six, seven, eight yards, you're hitting it in the backfield. But it takes time. It took me a time to learn how to play with snacks. Guys got to learn how to play with a guy like Dexter Lawrence. You know what I mean? Like there's, there, It takes a little time for a defense to gel. Everybody has to learn the terminology. Everybody has to learn that in this defense, when they run this play, this is a vulnerable situation for us. Like it needs to take this takes time. It's like trial and error a little bit. So I expect them to continue to improve. I'm not saying they're not going to, you know, have another game where they give up X amount of rushing yards. It will happen. Hopefully not. But, you know, I do expect improvement from offense and defense. I, 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 two more things. I'll let you guys go. Um, first thing, so I, I live in Minneapolis, and this Viking team is a lot better than anyone thought they would be. Yes, they are. It together. looks that so, way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Flores has had them playing great on defense. So I think that week one was uh, we, we expected the old, uh, old, an old, an older Viking team, and this new one is, including with Sam Donald. They're, 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 they're working miracles with, with this kid, which is kind of a good thing. I'm, I'm glad that Sam Donald was finally, uh, finally showed up. And second of all, another thing about the defense, uh, I think um, I know you can't, as an organization, you can't cover all your holes. And I think um, not getting – uh, some sturdy defensive tackles this offseason might come back and bite us because once uh, Dexter leaves the field, people are just pushing around our defensive tackles. Uh, and I, I, I'm not sure if they could find someone, a veteran who's around. I'm not sure if there's anyone around him on the street right now. But I think that's going to be a continued problem um, with the Giants this season, which uh, I, hope, I, hope I'm not, I hope I'm you know I'm wrong on this, but that's one thing I'm seeing. So anyway, I really hope they turn around against Cleveland. Um, I'm, I'm, once again, I'm positive. I think they'll do better than last week. Uh, that's it. Go Giants. All right. Thanks very much for the call. Uh, no doubt, DJ Davidson, who hasn't played a whole ton in his early career because of injuries. Jordan Riley, who only flashed a little bit last year when he got some playing time. Those are a couple of the defensive tackles the Giants are counting on in the rotation. And they're still trying to get themselves acclimated. Yeah. I mean, it's part of it's part of the issue. Yeah, it, it takes it takes a little while for a new defense, new players to gel into a system. Um, you know, like I like when the season first started, I, I expected this team to look a little sloppy, and I'm not just the Giants. Every team around the league definitely didn't expect Sam Darden to go twelve for twelve. <laughs> Yeah, that was the. <laughs> That's I was like, true. what is happening right now? <laughs> like, is that the same Sam that. Donald that played at this stadium years ago? And um, you you know you never know, but I think preseason has a lot to do with that. You know the amount of reps that the guys get in the game, not practice reps in the game. Yep. You know why? And 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 even it's vanilla, but there are plays that happen in preseason games against your base defense because you're not going to run anything crazy, but you're going to run something like a base defense that you're going to run all the time. Right. You're going to run that base defense. It's vanilla, but you're still going to run that. That's going to be what you do throughout the year and to see it as many times as you can, right? A run play that hits in one gap, a run play that hits in another gap, and schemed up run plays, they all look differently against the same defense. Right. 
You know what I mean? And it's the amount of reps that you get. Now you're learning. Oh, if we have split flow, I got to be a little bit later to hit my hole. You know what I mean? There's things like that that you kind of have to go through to understand because it's it's only certain things that the coaches could do because they only have access to the players for a certain amount of time. You know, so it's like you got to kind of go through it a little bit and the Giants have to learn from it. 201-939-4513. Andy in Buffalo. You are next on Big Blue Kickoff Live. Hello. Hey, Paul and Jonathan, love the show. I uh, just Thank wanted you. to weigh in there a little bit with the uh, with the team and just the overall roster that the Giants have had the last, say, 10 to 15 years. And I just wanted to, to check, I mean, is there any accountability with the personnel department or the scouting department? Because it seems like the coaches and the GMs, they come and go. But according to the website, the same guys are making the calls on a lot of these picks year after year. And let's face it, the roster for this amount of time has been pretty subpar. And I looked at some of the other flagship franchises, like the Hunt family and the Rooney's, and uh, the only one I could really find was their, uh, Dan Rooney is involved in some of the personnel decisions. And I know that Chris Mayer is involved and Tim McDonald's also involved. And I know that they're Mayer family members. Do you think that would ever change or would they maybe reach out to get, I guess, some other, some other um, uh, football personnel uh, guys that can make different decisions out there or could help them in the draft process? Well, here's what I will tell you, okay, after I just... <laughs> he just uh, went had, right back into it. He to, wasn't even finished sneezing yet. I had myself a little bit of an allergy thing going on this morning. I don't, I don't know what's going on out here, but there's definitely some allergy stuff going on in the Meadowlands today. Uh, let me tell you this. The Giants personnel department is really gone undergone a huge overhaul over the course of the last few years. So I would beg to differ with you that over the last 10, 12, 15 years, whatever time frame you cited to say that there's mostly the same guys here. That is not true at all. There is hardly anybody left from, you know, six, seven, eight years ago. Not very many at all. Joe Shane in particular uh, has really turned this, this, this unit over. So and, I, and they don't make decisions either. No. Like they, they give information. Correct. They scout, they give information, they say what they feel about somebody, but ultimately the the decision comes to two people. Joe Shane ultimately, but Dayball is definitely included in that. Those guys are not like saying, I think we should do this. No, they're saying this is what I think of this player. Correct. That's the that's what they do for they're the asked Giants. for input. They're not asked to make the decision. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I, mean, I like what Shane's done and being here in Buffalo and, you know, you know Dable and, and Shane, what they've done. I like the three drafts, but I think of, like, just the, the missed picks with, like, the Canarius Tonys and the Eli Apples and how these guys aren't getting That's the second contract. That's before this administration. Really mm-hmm. setting back. No, he did say that, though. He said over the years. He did say that over the years. Yeah. Uh, <clears> look, <throat> I'll say this. Joe Shane, um, uh, um, Dennis, uh, Tim, Tim McDonald. Um, these guys who are the upper echelon of the personnel department, they are everywhere every week. And I can tell you that under the previous regime, that was not always the case. There was a lot more film study done on prospects. This administration physically goes out and sees players firsthand a lot more. They want more eyewitness uh, uh, accounts uh, amongst the top level of their administration than the previous one did. That is certainly one very noticeable difference between this GM and the way he runs it compared to the last GM. And you know, I was a Gettleman guy coming in. And, and, and And I think that Gettleman had mixed results, some good, some bad. I still think that, you know, he, he unfortunately was victimized by a lot of circumstances, some which were beyond his control. But there is one thing for sure. The last couple of years of Dave Gettleman here, after he had undergone horrible cancer surgery and was really battered by that, he put everything he had into recovery to fight for survival. And so he was doing more in-office work and tape work than he necessarily was running around the country, as Joe Shane does, to literally get a look at guys firsthand. That's that's absolutely a change, which is very tangible here. And I would just caution you 
to bunch Joe Shane and his administration in with any of the previous ones who had undergone some very difficult and scuffling times uh, as yeah, Giants good people. Good point. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah, I, love, I love the show. Let's go Big Blue. Appreciate it. 201 939 Four five one three. We got time for one more quick call if somebody else wants to get in, but but we don't have much time. Uh, Jonathan, very quickly, I think one of the things that the Giants absolutely have to do in this game because the numbers pair it out. The last couple of years, Cleveland's defense is almost like a time and a half or two times better at home in that building with the dog pound than they are away. They find ways to control the narrative and the tempo of the game when they're home. They get revved up. They're good enough on their own. But then you got the dog pound. Ruff, 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 ruff. They're barking and they're foaming at the mouth. <laughs> and they're throwing dog bones and dog biscuits yeah. out onto the field. Yeah. And these guys feed off of it. It makes a difference. You can't let them control the narrative of the game. Yeah, that means offensively you have to move the ball. You have to score That's points. right. You have to protect your quarterback. have to run a football. Um, look, Miles Garrett, he's one of the best players in the league, and if, if he can get controlled throughout the game, the Giants will have success on offense because not to say there's nobody else on their defensive line. That's not the case at all. We're talking about Zadarius Smith, Delvin Thompson. They got uh, that linebacker, Owusu Karmoa. Am I saying that Jock. right? Jock. J-O-K. Jock, just say it like that. Former Notre Dame But did player. I say it right, Pearson? I, I think you nailed did it. Do, Owusu Karmoa. That's I was, him. I was practicing a little bit. He can play. He can play. Yeah, he can. He's a good player. It's a very good play. You know, and, and look, the, the Giants offensively, I think the strategy of running the ball early, you know, getting the ball out, I think Daniel Jones will look better in week in his third game back from an ACL injury. Uh, and if they can establish to run against this team and be the more physical team in Cleveland. I think last week the Giants got out physical. I think week one they got out physical. If they can establish a run and be the more physical team, they'll have some success in Cleveland this weekend. Yeah, that is a very, very difficult place to play. Mm -hmm. So we will see. Uh, folks, don't forget the uh, Giants radio pregame show on WFAN begins at 11 a.m. It is a 1 o'clock kickoff. And then following the game, there'll be the Giants post game. You'll hear from Jonathan, the John Schmelk, of course. I'll be calling in from the locker room. There's also the Giants post game live show on MSG immediately following the game. One hour uh, TV coverage of uh, player reaction and locker room reaction. We got you covered all day here on Sunday. And hopefully for you fans, you can enjoy the game and see the Giants pick up their first win of the season as they visit Cleveland. Once again, for Jonathan Casillas and I'm Paul Dottino, this has been Big Blue Kickoff Live presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football giants. We'll see you next time, everybody. Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like, you know, to check the date of the big game first before you accidentally buy tickets on your 20th wedding anniversary and have to spend the next 20 years of your marriage making up for it. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Life is an act of constant reinvention. That's true for you and for cars. Nissan reimagined the all-new kicks around you. The Bose Personal Plus sound system with speakers in the headrests keep you in the groove, while the Nissan Safety Shield 360 technologies keep you safe. If Nissan reinvented the kicks, you can reinvent yourself. Drive the all-new, reimagined Nissan Kicks today. Available feature. Bose is a registered trademark of the Bose Corporation. Nissan Safety Shield technologies can't prevent all collisions or warn in all situations. See owner's manual for important safety information.